John, it's it's not unusual for us to stand beside a vehicle, but in this particular case, we're being shaded by a vehicle, uh, something with a really interesting and elegant plan form. Tell us about Silent Falcon. Silent Falcon is a solar electric powered, what would be classed as a small UAV, mm -hmm. uh, roughly 30 pounds, four meter wingspan, two meter fuselage. Its big differentiator is that it's solar electric powered. We have solar cells in the wing. They cover about a square meter. Mm -hmm. They generate about 80 watts of power in sunlight conditions. We also have a battery in there, but it allows us to extend our endurance or our flight time far longer than if we were just flying on a battery. What's the brain feed behind this? Why this particular plan form? And more important, why something solar at this point? As the industry has evolved, the missions that people are flying, whether they're commercial or military or whatever, they want to stay in the air a lot longer than traditional, what I call legacy DOD systems, an hour and a half, two hours, unless you get in the very expensive or some of the gasoline powered ones. And so there was a need developed for a long endurance system that could carry a heavy payload as well, and we decided to fill that need. And I assume from some of the other information I see here that it's got a fairly low noise footprint. It does. We originally designed it for military operations where silence was a big deal. It's almost impossible to hear it at 100 meters. At 200 meters, you can't hear it at all. And that actually has obvious benefits in military applications. But in other applications, wildlife monitoring, measurement, and a variety of other applications, that's still a pretty important attribute. Is there any particular sweet spot in regards to applications at this point? Broadly speaking, geospatial industry, which covers a lot, mapping and surveys, environmental surveys, that seems to be where the greatest level of interest is. And then I think I would say probably the second one, they're still in the security and military applications. What about the stability control system on something like this? Does it require a manned influence or is there a certain amount of autonomy built into the system? The only two aircraft we've lost is when we handed over the autonomous flight to an RC pilot and so, it, <laughs> and so the system is fully autonomous. Once the launcher is cocked and the operator pulls the launch cord, it can fly completely autonomously until it lands with the parachute. Now, we do have the capability of what we call RPV mode, where a pilot can take over, but it is designed for fully autonomous flight. What kind of materials and technology is employed in the airframe? Okay, the airframe is all carbon fiber. Its design is influenced by a glider, sailplanes. It's a relatively proven airfoil, relatively proven construction techniques, very, very light, and that's why solar power works on small UAVs, because the power generated by the solar panels actually makes a difference to your flight profile. John, thanks so much. We appreciate your time for Aero TV and Airborne. Okay, thanks so much. Aero TV is brought to you by AML's patent pending wireless induction charging system eliminates confusion over those charging cables, cuts down cockpit cable clutter, and allows you and your passengers to fly cordless and eliminate the cable nightmare. www.aviationmodificationleaders.com Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration.